Welcome back Dragon Ball fans and in today's video I will be doing a tier list of Dragon Ball games and I'm going to preface this in the beginning but not every game is going to be on here. This is going to be games that I played growing up. I know there's games like Final Bout. People are like oh that's the shittiest game ever. I never played that shit. Why would I play that shit? So these are just going to be games that I played. I think I have 21 or 22 games in honor of Sparking Zero. I can add that to the tier list later. But anyway, let's dive right in to this tier list. Starting off, we got Dragon Ball GT. I think it's called Transformations. It was on the Game Boy. This shit was fire, bro. This I remember, th whew, this game was fucking fire. I never beat the game, but I played the shit out of it on Game Boy. I don't know if it went to, to like the Shadow Dragons, but I got up to Baby, and I don't know if that was like the end of the game, cause like, you can see there's Wildo. You can barely see it, but there's Wildo and there's Baby in there. So I'm gonna put this in B tier, cause this game was fire. I remember playing this as a kid. This is what I thought all the other Dragon Ball games were going to be. I was going to put um, Legacy of Goku in here, but I ne I like played like maybe 20 minutes of those because I didn't like the weird... It wasn't like a beat-em-up. It was like a weird fucking RPG. I don't even know how to describe it. But this one was like... It was a side-scroller, and it was beat-em-up. You could beat the shit out of people. You could play as Trunks. You could play as Pan. You could play as all these guys. But in the Legacy of Goku games, it wasn't what I was expecting. So I didn't put those in here. But Dragon Ball GT Transformations... Fire game. I want to play it again. I don't know if I have... I probably have a Game Boy lying around somewhere. But I would love to finish this game someday. And obviously, you see what's coming up next. You see what's coming up next. The trio. The trio. Obviously, Budokai Tenkaichi 3 is in Z tier. And this may be controversial. But I'm putting Budokai 1 up there. And I'm putting te uh, Tenkaichi 2 in A tier. Now, he now, hear me out. Hear me out before you guys attack me. Budokai Tenkaichi 2 was awesome. And I didn't... The One of the things I didn't like about it was the weird, you fly around the map, like Budokai 3. It was like a mix of Budokai Tenkaichi and Budokai 3. It was weird. I didn't. I don't really like that. Like, sometimes it's cool, but in this one, it didn't make sense because I'm just like, just throw me into the... I'm, I, we'll get into Budokai 3 later, but I didn't like it. I'll explain why I like in Budokai 3 later. But in Budokai Tenkaichi 2, I didn't like it. Um, it was an improvement from Tenkaichi 1, like a vast improvement. But, like, it had multiple health bars and stuff, and I think in Tenkaichi 1, it was only one health bar. It would go green, then yellow, then red. But in here, you have, like, three health bars. One of them is green, the other one's red, the other one's yellow, and then you could get blue and white and whatever the fuck, right? Dra Tenkaichi 1 holds, a, holds a, uh, a nice place in my heart. Like, that opening music where Mr. Popo greets you in, like, the, the campaign mode, and then he, like, claps his hands, and then you go into the hyperbolic time chamber, and there's all the sagas... That shit, that shit is engraved in my memory. I can, like, I can hear it just by looking at the cover art. And then Tenkaichi 3 is just, like, the best of both worlds. You get, like, all of it. There's no, oh, let me just drop down and challenge this guy. You just go straight into the gameplay. They have, um, like, in-game cutscenes. Like, it uses in-game graphics for the cutscenes. Like, you can see right here. That's, that's a cutscene right now. So... That one is just the best out of the three of them. Tenkaichi 1 is a personal preference. I can understand why Budokai Tenkaichi 2 you'd like better, but I personally like the first one better because it kind of, instead of these 2D games, it was just three, it was like the beginning of the 3D Dragon Ball games. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of me rambling, yapping. Let's get on to the next game. It is Budokai 2. I'm going to put this in A tier as well because it was kind of like that weird board game thing. That one was fine. That was fine. The gameplay was fine. And you could do those weird, crazy fusions. I know you could do that in Budokai 3, but I specifically remember it with Budokai 2. So yeah, I, th I think that's a good place to put it. Anyway, on to the next game, Raging Blast 2. Goaded fucking game. Raging Blast, the series, is fucking underrated. In my opinion. Shit is fire. And the opening to that game was fucking fire. You got Cooler fighting, like, fucking uh, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. You got... And then, at the end, you're like, who the fuck is Hachiak? Because if you didn't see the... What is it? It wasn't a Christmas special. It was a special for Dragon Ball Z. If you didn't see that back in the day, he was like a tuffle. But then they remastered it for Raging Blast 2. And that's when I first watched it, and I was just like, hell yeah, this shit is awesome. The story mode wasn't really there. And I would... I might put it at the top of A tier. I might do this. I might change it later. But as of right now, I think I'll put it right there because the story mode wasn't really a story mode. You just picked the character and you fought people. And that was pretty much it. Everything else in it was like, you know, you got the local play, you got the tournaments. Yeah, whatever. But Tenkaichi 3 had that too. 
and it was just way better. You could do like the cell games, uh, the other world tournament. You could do the normal tournament. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. I think I'll leave that right there for now, but I might switch it later. But as of right now, I'll put it in A tier. And fighters, I like fighters. It's a good original story and all that. The gameplay is awesome. It's like a two D fighter replaced fucking Marvel vs. Capcom out of like Evo and shit like that. Uh, rightfully so, cause who the fuck plays Marvel vs. Capcom? So Fighter Z is good. I don't know if I would put it on Z tier. I don't. It doesn't hit home like these top ones and the other ones to come. I'll put it at the top of A tier for now. It might be tied with Rage and Blast, but I think Rage and Blast is a little bit. Excuse me. There you go. I think Rage and Blast Two is just a little bit better. I like the 3D arena fighters better than the 2D, but I can understand why you would put it above on to the next one battle of z so i'm putting it in c tier but i'm gonna give it some credit battle of z walked so xenoverse could run i feel like the precedent that battle of z set was for the next dragon ball games which was xenoverse 1 and xenoverse 2 and i cannot like the whole multiple people you can have a team in fighting and it was like a 3d arena fighter you could have multiple people on the screen because and the Tenkaichi games, you would have to switch out and stuff like that. So I can understand what it was trying to do, but the game itself was pretty ass. So I'm going to unfortunately put it in C tier, but I can... It was almost revolutionary almost because it set, like I said, it set the precedence for the next games to come out. Xenoverse 1 and Xenoverse 2. Now we're now we're on to the GOAT. Obviously, Dokkan Battle. Sheesh, you know what I'm saying? Z tier. I used to make Dokkan Battle content. I might make some more in the future. That anniversary is coming up. Dokkan Battle, I've been playing this since it came out. You know, I've been watching all the YouTubers, The Truth, Nano, Diddy, Rhyme, when he used to play it. Watch all those dudes. Dokkan Battle is one of those games that I always play. Probably the only mobile game I actually play. Fuck it, why not? It's Dragon Ball. It's fucking awesome. Sure, it's like bubble poppers, like Candy Crush, whatever people want to call it. You just pop bubbles and it doesn't take that much skill. But it's a fun game. It's fun collecting the cards, the LRs and all that stuff. So... I'm putting it in Z tier, like I said. Been playing it since it came out. Haven't stopped yet. When I stop, that'll be crazy. I'll, I'll stop when the truth stops. How about that? Anyway, next game, the first D tier. Uh, <laughs> Dragon Ball Evolution. I don't know if anyone's actually played this game. I played it on Gamefly because I was like, fuck it, it's a Dragon Ball game. Why not? I want to see how bad it is. The gameplay was the same as Budokai or the Shin Budokai on PSP. I think this was only for PSP. The graphics were terrible. The story was terrible. It was just a shittier Budokai, Shin Budokai, fucking PSP port. That's all it was. I don't know if there was even any voice acting whatsoever in the game. I mean, it was fun. Like I said, the gameplay was the same as Budokai and Shin Budokai. So, I'm like, the gameplay was fine, but the graphics were really fucking awful. And you're playing through the shitty Dragon Ball Evolution story. So, like, that doesn't help. The next one, Rage and Blast 1. I know I put Rage and Blast 2 in top of A tier, but this one, this one definitely going to Z tier. You know what I'm saying? All the homies know that Rage and Blast 1 was fucking goaded. I think, fuck, I have the copy of the game, but I would show it and flex my collection, but I don't, I think it's in a box somewhere. Rage and Blast 1, the graphics, the cell shaded graphics were fucking awesome. It was like a Budokai Tenkaichi for like a new generation of consoles. So that was cool. And I do like the story. Like, it was the same as Budokai Tenkaichi 3, where it was just like Dragon Ball, uh, like, not Dragon Ball, Saiyan Saga, Frieza Saga, and then you got What Ifs, and then it, it was awesome. And the, some of the What Ifs were cool. Something about Rage and Blast 1 just hits different. They uh, they should be, like, similar, but I don't know. Rage and Blast 1, like I said, it was the beginning of Budokai Tenkaichi for a new generation of consoles, so I feel like I would have to slightly put it over uh Rage and Blast 2 and I honestly like the graphics better in Rage and Blast 2 than Rage and Bla I mean Rage and Blast 1 than 2. We got another Z tier, Xenoverse 2. Obviously I have to put it in Z tier because this game is still going strong. They still release an updates, they're still releasing DLC. This game has been going on forever and it's just Xenoverse 1 but with better controls. Sometimes on the when you're reversing on line like combos drop but that happened in Xenoverse 1. But you can't get like spammed like in Xenoverse One. I remember, I remember in Xenoverse One, you could just blue hurricane someone and they could just get stuck. But you can like vanish, you can fuck evasive skills. There, you can back hit, and it was just a more improved Xenoverse. And it makes sense. Xenoverse One was like the like I said, Battle Z was like kind of the prototype. Xenoverse One was like the official release. Like oh, okay, maybe we could do this. Okay, 
there are some glitches or some fuck ups. Let's do Xenoverse 2. But you can make your own character, go through the story as your own character. You can kick ass with Goku. You can do all of that shit. And I just realized I forgot to put Ultimate Tenkaichi in here. I feel like that one would also go in C tier. The only thing that was keeping it up, the gameplay sucked ass. The graphics were good, but it was like the, I think it was the first ever Dragon Ball game where you could create your character and you had your own story mode. But that would go in C tier. I totally forgot to, I feel like that was a revolutionary thing for the Dragon Ball games, officially making your own character. And I neglected to put Ultimate Tenkaichi in here. So I apologize for that. But like I said, it would probably go in C tier. But yeah, Xenoverse 2, definitely um, Z tier. I would put Xenoverse 1 in B tier, mainly because of the problems. I remember there was this one uh, mission where it was you and Trunks versus Beerus and Whis. And they both had, um, what is it called? Super armor. And Trunks was fucking useless. The AI sucked. He died immediately. So it was just you versus these super armored fucks. You can't do damage to them. They're on your ass. So there was problems. Xenoverse 2 rectified that. There was, an, there was barely any super armor in Xenoverse 2. I don't think there was any now that I think about it. But, you know, just small little problems. Xenoverse 1 was good. You got to, It was the first good game where you could make your own character and you could go through the story as your, the character you created. And the story wasn't bad, but Xenoverse 2 was just a better story than that. So I think B tier is good for it. I wouldn't put it in A tier. Like, what... What Xenoverse 1 did was awesome, but it definitely wasn't A-tier worthy. There was, there was a lot of bugs. You can glitch people. Like I said, Blue Hurricane, you could just fucking fly around in your fucking Blue Hurricane. And this man, your opponent was just fucked from day one. Like, you can't, you can't get out of that. So Because I think there's an update in Xenoverse 2 where you could play Xenoverse 1 now. So it's just like, what's the point of Xenoverse 1 now? Why would you revisit that? You get shittier control, shittier gameplay and all that shit. Super armor and shit like that. So, B tier is appropriate, I would say. It doesn't make it to C tier, mainly because of what it was. Like, the gameplay was a lot better than Battle of Z and Ultimate Tenkaichi. I know it's not here, but I'm going to reference it. And the story mode was better than Ultimate Tenkaichi. You could create your own character. That was cool. Yeah, and you know, I, I think it, I think B, B tier is a good fucking spot. And Budokai 3, obviously, it joins the Godfathers. I, I, I feel like 3 is the sweet spot for Dragon Ball games. Because Tenkaichi 3... Um, Budokai 3, and if they make a Raging Blast 3, that could have been a Z tier. But, you know, Budokai 3, classic. It did everything that Budokai 1... Okay, actually, I'm going to move Budokai 1 up here. I'm going to put this in B tier. But Budokai 1, I'm pretty sh I played this a little bit as a kid. I didn't really get into it. I didn't like the graphics. And I'm pretty sure it only went up to the Cell Saga, which is weird because I don't know why Dragon Ball games sometimes did that, where they just went up to, like, the Cell Saga, and you're like, that's it! I'm like, there's Majin Buu, but, you know, that's okay, whatever. But uh, Budokai 1, I'm pretty sure it only went up to the Cell Saga. The graphics and gameplay were very bare bones. You couldn't do cool, crazy shit like you can in Budokai 2 and 3. And then Budokai 2 had that weird fucking board game story mode. Budokai 3 had that weird open world where you could, like, play as Vegeta and fly around the world. You could fight Cybermen. You could visit, like, Goku's house and blow it up or whatever the fuck. I like that better than Tenkaichi 2 because Budokai 3 was like the godfather of starting that. And there was just more to do. And you could play as any character and go throughout their saga. I think in Budokai Tenkaichi 2, you can only play as like, let's say you were playing the Sa Saiyan Saga. You start off as Piccolo, you meet Raditz, and you're like, oh shit, let's have this little tussle like they did in the anime. And then you would get, you would play as like, Goku or something instead, and you would fly around, and then you would have to fight Raditz. In Budokai 3, you could play as anyone. I remember I unlocked Broly, so I was just flying around as Broly on the map, and I just stopped by Kame House. Broly was like, man, fuck y'all, blew up Kame House, and then I would go back up in the sky in this weird open world, and Kame House wouldn't be there. I'm like, that's pretty cool. And then I would go to Goku's house, blow up Goku's house, go back up there, Goku's house wasn't there anymore. That was cool. I feel like that did more than Budokai Tenkaichi 2 did, with their open world. So that's why I think Budokai 3 is above that. And like I said, you can play as anyone. You can play as Goku and go through the main story. You can play as Vegeta and go through the main story that he was a part of. So it was like you get to play everyone's story as them. Instead of like Budokai Tenkaichi 2 where you had to play that their certain part. And you know what I'm saying? I hope that made sense. I feel like I yapped a lot and I rambled on and shit like that. 
But that's why I think Budokai 3 is better, because it, they did more, and it was more innovative than the Tenkaichi 2 open world shit. Anyway, enough of that. We're on to burst limit, and this, like I said, Raging Blast was a Budokai Tenkaichi for a new generation of consoles. Burst limit was like a new, was Budokai for a new generation of consoles. That's what I meant to say. And honestly, this is another game that only went up to Cell Saga. I would put it down here, but I'm going to put it up here because the intro was awesome. Graphics were awesome. Gameplay was awesome. You could, like, knock people into the sky, and then you had to, like, mash the buttons and do a little fucking quick time event. See who got the advantage. And then you could go back down to the ground if you wanted to. So the transitions were cool. The graphics were cool. You could play as Broly in here, which is weird, because and Bardock, which is weird because you didn't explore those sagas, but you know it is what it is. It's cool. And I feel like it was a good start, and I wish they made a burst limit too. Like, an A tier for your first game is pretty fucking awesome. Now you just gotta, like, improve upon that. So it, it, it's unfortunate that, that we never got a burst limit too, but, you know, burst limit was a fucking awesome game. Next up, we got Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I am placing this probably at the top of B tier. The game is good. The graphics are awesome. The cutscenes are awesome. The free roaming is awesome. The only parts that annoy me are the stupid droids like, Oh, I gotta fight these guys. I gotta fucking fight these guys. No, you don't. Why did you include these droids? Having them in like certain spots is cool. But when I'm Goku trying to like fly around 100% the game, and then every time I pass like a group of droids, they like aggro on me. And then Goku's like, I should probably fight them. And I was like, no, I don't want to fight them. I'm trying to 100% the game. It's very annoying. I hate it. The graphics are awesome. Gameplay is very bare bones, but you don't need Budokai Tenkaichi 3 graphics for the story they're trying to tell. It's just a fucking awesome retelling of the Dragon Ball story. I think I've talked about this in my Dragon Ball Kakarot videos. I know I shit on it a lot, but having them free, having you free roam in the same, um, the future saga is see the destroyed world because the androids are fucking assholes. That's cool. Being able to relive the Dragon Ball story is awesome. And I feel like this is the definitive way of reliving the Dragon Ball story. If you want to, like, on hands play it yourself, this is the best way to do it. Because you can also free roam as, like, Majin Vegeta and shit like that. You can free roam as anybody. It's pretty cool. The gameplay is just very bare bones. And it's really annoying, these little stupid mini fucking goons that you have to fight throughout the world. So fucking stupid. It is what it is. They had to pad the game. Like, there has to be things for you to do. I get it. I fucking get it. But the game's good. Like I said, if you ever want to relive the Dragon Ball story, like, in a simple... Like, because Budokai Tenkaichi 3 gameplay is kind of... It did decently hard if you're a casual gamer. Kakarot's the way to go. I know I shit talk it a lot on my channel, but it's a pretty good game. Next up, we got Dragon Ball Legends. The next fucking mobile game. I like this mobile game. I just don't like it that much. I'm going to put it in B tier. It, it ain't no Dokkan battle. I know the gameplay is probably better than... And the graphics are better than Dokkan. But I, I, I can never get into this. I didn't really care about the story mode. And the, like collecting the cards is cool. But I feel like it wasn't as cool as Dokkan. Maybe it's because... I started playing Dragon Ball Legends when it first came out. So I'm not just like a Dragon Ball Dokkan loyalist. I played Dragon Ball Dokkan when it first came out. When Legends first came out, I was like, let me try this. I couldn't get into it. Like, sure, the gameplay is cool and all, and more um, on hands than Dokkan is. I just couldn't get into it. You know what I'm saying? I, maybe that's just me. But the, I don't hate the game. The game is not ass. The game is good. There are some bugs in it, but there's some bugs in Dokkan too. But I feel like with Dragon Ball Legends being a PvP game, the bugs in it, like if you have OP cards, it's more difficult than in Dokkan because Dokkan is a PvE. So if you have an OP card, just fuck up the red zone or whatever but if you're in dragon ball legends and you like unfortunately don't pull the awesome card like i remember vegeto blue when he first came out he was op as fuck and if you were that unfortunate person who didn't pull vegeto blue then you would just get fucking cream pied on pvp so i feel like there's a different way of balancing the game because dokkan's pve and legends is pvp Next up, we got Shin Budokai, Another Road. I would have put the first Shin Budokai because I don't even remember playing that game. I know I had it, but Shin Budokai, Another Road was just leagues better. And I'm putting this... I want to put it in A tier or B tier. I feel like... Because uh, what they did... Because for a PSP game, it was pretty fire. The gameplay was exactly like Budokai Burst Limit. But like the open world was much better than... Budokai 3 and Tenkaichi 2, you had like a team of people, 
and like let's say Omega Shenron was just blasting North City or whatever, and then you would have to send your guy over. It was like tactical at the same time. So their open world was pretty cool. It was like a tactical game mixed with a Dragon Ball game, and I really like that. I wish games on console would do that, like Budokai 3 and Budokai Tenkaichi 2, or maybe a next game. I don't know. Sparking Zero is probably not going to have any open world shit like that. But if they want to make another game in the future, I feel like they should incorporate that and make it better. That shit was fucking cool. I remember as a kid, I'm like, holy shit, I have to like throw my team out there. Piccolo, handle handle Frieza. Goku, handle Cooler. I'll go handle fucking Omega Shenron. Let's fuck these dudes up. Broly's here too. Oh, fuck. You know, it was just very tactical and like something I have never seen in a Dragon Ball game since. It's very unfortunate. But Shin Budokai, another road fucking banger goat game i almost want to put it in z tier now but i think a tier is fine i'll revisit the tiers after anyway next up dragon ball sagas or dragon ball kakarot 1.0 prototype whatever I'm, obviously this game is unfortunately going to go in c tier because gameplay is the greatest the graphics are kind of silly and it also another game that only goes up to cell saga which once again is fucking weird as shit i don't know why it does that dragon ball z sagas i feel like is almost underrated because i feel like a lot of people like nanogenics dotto I understand the game is trash, but if you were a kid growing up playing this game, this game was fucking fire, dude. I've played it recently. It's not the greatest game, but I don't absolutely hate it. That's why it's in C tier and not D tier. I can understand if you want to put it in D tier, but come on. This was Dragon Ball Kakarot before Dragon Ball Kakarot came out. This walked so Dragon Ball Kakarot can run. Dragon Ball Z Saga is underrated. I wish they would have added a Boo Saga. That would have been fucking awesome, but you know. It only went up to Cell Saga. I guess that's fine. And this one, I don't know how many people play this, but Super Dragon Ball. I want to put this in D tier, but I think I'm going to put it at the end of C tier because it was like a weird Tekken arena fighter, but with Dragon Ball. It's very weird. I don't know how that was. That's the best way I can describe it. I don't even remember what the story mode is, but I remember playing it and like you couldn't like I think you could fly, but it was like very hard to fly like in Tenkaichi 3 or... And Budokai 3, you just jump and fly up in there. This one, you had to, like, hit, like, a button input, and then you could fly. And it, you had to hit, like, a weird button input to transform. It was very complicated. It was very weird. Like I said, it was like a Tekken Arena fighter, but with Dragon Ball characters. It was very, it was a very odd game. Some of the combos were cool. The graphics were pretty cool. I'll throw some gameplay up on the screen because I feel like I'm not making any sense. But it was a very interesting game. And we haven't seen anything like it since. <laughs> so I wonder why. But you know, that's I'll put it right there. I think that's a good spot. It's definitely not with these bangers up here. It's a weird game. You might like it. And it was very weird to input like Key Blast and stuff. It was just a very interesting game. I, they were trying something different. Shout out to them for trying something. Shout out to them for not following up with it. So, yeah. Anyway, this is the point of the video where I go through, reorganize the tiers, see if I want to change anything or not. Okay, so I didn't move anything from different tiers, but I did reorganize the tiers. I put Dragon Ball Z Sagas in front of Super Dragon Ball and Battle of Z because, like I said, it holds a soft spot in my heart. My brother and I would play that shit like crazy. That game was fucking everything to us. Super Dragon Ball, it was better than Battle of Z because it wasn't as... I remember the the gameplay in Battle Z being, being very tedious. You know, maybe those two games are tied. And obviously, D tier is going to be the same. That game is trash. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, I put it at the top of B tier still. I put it over Xenoverse. I feel like you could tie those two because, like I said, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, the gameplay is very bare bones, but it's the best retelling of Dragon Ball. It's better to tie them because Xenoverse 2 was like the first good story mode where you could make your own character and go through a story mode. Sure, the gameplay had some kinks to it, but it was good for what it was. PvE was awesome. PvP might have been a little glitchy, but if you strictly stayed PvE, like just play the story mode and parallel quest, you're perfectly fine. Rage of Blast 2, Burst Limit. I almost... You could tie these ones. Definitely, you could tie these two. Uh, Tenkai Ishii 2 is a perfect second place. Shin Budokai is... I might be overrating it a little bit, but I feel like, like I said, with the open world tactics, it was fucking awesome. Fighter Z, I know that might be too low for some of y'all, but growing up with these other games, these other games were way better than Fighters. And then Budokai Tenkaichi, um, Budokai 2, I feel like that's a perfect spot for it. There's a reason, I don't want to say there's a reason why they didn't remaster it with 1 and 3, 
3 is just a better version of 2, and 1 was just like the first game. Uh, Tenkai Eiji 3, Budokai 3, obviously the GOATs. They're the GOATs of the PS2 era. You, you I almost got to put them in Z+. And then Dokkan, you know, that game's still going. There's so many YouTubers about it. There's so many fun, so much funding going into this game. This game makes so much money. You have to put it up there with the GOATs. Rage of Blast 1 might be controversial. I can understand why you like Rage of Blast 2 more. Rage of Blast 1 is just better in my opinion. I feel like you can't argue with Xenoverse 2. It's just better than Xenoverse 1. And it actually had a good story mode. And the gameplay was much better. PvP was still a little bit iffy, but I feel like that's connectivity issues. But you know what it is, what it is. Budokai Tenkaichi 1 started the 3D fucking flying around fighter fucking Dragon Ball shit. Like, we got Rage... Like, if we didn't get Tenkaichi 1, we wouldn't have Tenkaichi 3. Rage and Blast, we wouldn't have Sparking 0, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta show some love to the OG. Anyway, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. I mainly did this because Akira... Unfortunately, as you guys all know, Akira Toriyama passed beginning of this month. I wanted to wait a little bit before I made a, a video talking about Dragon Ball or talking about Toriyama's death because I didn't want to seem like... I was doing it for views and stuff because I am still a small YouTuber and I didn't want to be like, pro like not profiting because I'm not making any money off of these, but like gaining views and stuff off of his death. Because, you know, as you can tell, Toriyama has a special place in my heart. I have the mangas. I play the games. I've been watching this shit since I was a kid, bro. Rest in peace, Toriyama, Sensei Toriyama. You, your legacy will live on forever. I'm going to be doing more Dragon Ball videos. Like I said, I'm probably going to be doing more Dokkan and stuff because I like this shit. And when Sparking Zero comes out, you already know Josh and I are going to be playing that shit. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe and have a great rest of your day.